Hello everyone, today we're going to be sound designing this logo animation. If you haven't already, then check out the breakdown video where I share the process of creating this animation from scratch by using Illustrator and After Effects. So when it comes to doing sound design, I usually use DaVinci Resolve and then pair it up with Soundly, which is this amazing software that allows you to quickly import sound design elements. By the way, here's the list of programs that it supports. Soundly does have a free version. There are also free and paid sound packs, but if you want access to the entire pro library as well as unlimited local files storage so you can import and organize your own sound effects then you can use the coupon code broken to get the first three months for free after that it will cost you $15 if you pay monthly or $12.5 if you pay yearly I should mention that I have another tutorial available on the channel where I sound design this Minecraft TNT explosion shot alongside the blender and after effects visual effects tutorial itself all right, so here we are now in DaVinci Resolve. And first thing I wanna mention is that regardless of what software you're using, you should be able to easily follow along. And first thing we could do is say, enable dual screen if you have two monitors and then set one of them to be full screen for the timeline. So for sound design, you'll have more space to work with when you import all of those sound elements. And on the second monitor, you'll be able to see the video preview. But because this is a tutorial, we want to keep everything inside of one monitor. And then here we can toggle the mixer by clicking this button and then click three dots and switch to meters so we can monitor our audio. And we can also shut off the inspector for now. As for Soundly, you can go over to settings and set an audio storage folder, which I have one custom folder made specifically for Soundly. Let's now enable dock mode and then search for a random sound. When we go to import whatever sound we want, it will copy that sound to your custom destination and then import it into DaVinci Resolve in the media pool. And that reminds me, let's create a new sounds folder and we'll put everything inside of that, but we'll delete this one, we don't need it. And now before we start searching for any sounds, we wanna think who is this logo animation for and what sounds would make sense? So do we want a more serious tone or perhaps a more fun or upbeat tone? And with those things in mind, and after we analyze our logo animation and see what kind of elements we have, we can then, let's say, add a marker anywhere here on the timeline. In fact, I'll bring it over at the beginning, and then you can hold down Alt to stretch it across, and then we can double click to make notes. So let's say pencil, swooshes, bubbly sounds for letters, owl, and then a backpack paper maybe. Okay, so we'll hit done. And now we can see those all the way up here as a note. And now we'll start searching for them. So pencil, and then here we can click on any of those. Okay, so for example, this dropping pencil, we can use when it hits the ground. Okay. And by the way, you get this very convenient blue overlay on any sounds that you've already listened to. So now let's bring that here to as soon as it starts writing things in. And I'd like to have this happen a bit earlier. So here when it lets go of the line and then starts flying back up in the air. By the way, if you don't wanna accidentally cut the video itself, you can shut off the auto track selector, perhaps even lock it so you don't move it. Maybe we can search for a pop. This bubbly sound, we can use that when the pencil spawns and then we'll use only one pop sound. All right, that's even better. We'll use two pop sounds. And then there's this one. Oh, this one is so nice. Let's see if we can use it with the letters. Oh, but I think this last part should come in when the Inspire Hub letters pop up. Oh, that's perfect. And then this first part, we can use that for the first batch of the letters. And you can see that there's really no order as to how I go about adding the sounds. I can jump from the beginning to the end and then back in the middle, add pencil sounds and then go back, add letter sounds. So you don't have to linearly sound design is what I'm saying. All right, now let me search for some swooshes now. Cartoon. Oh, this one is nice. And here's another thing, I'm finding it hard to import this without cutting off the other sound. So first let's select it and I'll hit Shift S, which is a keyboard I have set up to move clips up and down on the tracks. So now I've made additional tracks and now we can just click and drag this into there and we'll move it back. By the way, you can select a certain area or hit Control A to select the entire clip and then drag it in. Okay. 
Okay. We can lower the audio and bring this in. Also, you can use these very convenient handles to fade clips in and out. Bring it back here. This coin sound sort of, it's a bit too much. So let's try it at the beginning. And by the way, you can notice that in some areas it just feels a bit too empty, but we'll keep going and keep adding more sounds in between. And then later at the end, we'll mix everything together as well as add some reverb just to make things blend with each other. Now let's go ahead and search for an owl. I think I have something. Maybe that's a bit too much. Let's try this. Try this one actually. We'll mute this with shift E, which is enable and disable, which is a custom one. I don't know what the original enable disable shortcut could be, but if you want to change any of your shortcuts, you can head over to DaVinci Resolve keyboard customization, and then you can search for your commands or keystrokes over here. Let's move this down, disable it, and we'll bring the other one in. By the way, you can lower the volume if you left click on this line and then hold down shift to have finer control. You can also turn on the inspector and control the volume over here. We can then give it a slight fade in and out. Let's try having both of them on, but then lower the volume with this second one. Okay, I'll delete that one and we'll leave this longer clip. Now let me search for some paper. Maybe I can use this in combination with the pencil writing. Let me make some room over here. It's a bit annoying to work with such little space, but what can you do? By the way, you can hold down shift and then scroll with your mouse wheel while your cursor is hovering over the tracks. So you can increase or decrease the height size. This one is nice. And the thing is that when you listen to them all put together, they kind of make sense. But if you were to listen to them one by one individually, then you would be like, okay, what is this random sound doing here? We could also use this one when the letters start popping up, but then lower the volume and then have it be cut off as soon as they start popping up and then reuse it for the other letters at the top and have it last as much as we need to. Cut it there. And another thing is that right now, this sound is isolated to only the left channel. So if we solo it by clicking the S icon there, we could have first of all turned this into a stereo by right clicking and to stereo before we imported it in DaVinci Resolve. But since we've done that already, we can right click on both of those, go to clip attributes under audio, switch it to stereo, and then set the right channel to use the embedded channel one as well. And now you should be able to hear it on both of your ears. Okay, let me also bring in these paper flip sound effects and then I'll put them very close to each other. And I'll use it somewhere towards the end here. Swoosh cartoon. Oh, this sound is actually very interesting. We could use that somewhere as well. Maybe for the pencil when it starts drawing. Let's see something like that. And there's this one sound that says body fall. Well, we could use it, but we can lower the volume a little bit. Okay, maybe we can take this swoosh cartoon sound and use it for when the pencil goes up in the air. And then there's this cartoon boing sound. That's what we could use to fill up the gap in between here when the pencil is up in the air. And maybe increase the volume. And I'm thinking the paper flips are a bit too intense. So let's tone them down. And at this point, I guess we can start dialing in the volumes. Okay, this random sound also might work for the letters. There's really no rule to this. You can have as much fun as you want. You can bring sounds in, see if they match. And if they don't, just delete them, try something else. And that's the beauty of working with Soundly. It very quickly allows you to grab a sound, put it in, try it, doesn't work, move on. As opposed to say having to go on a website that offers sound effects, you have to download it, bring it into your editing software. It just takes you out of the flow. Here's another falling sound. Again, I'm just trying to layer as many as I can, but then dial down the volume. We can maybe even fade this out so it doesn't go on for too long. 
Okay, here's another elegant swoosh, I would say. I'll use it over here. Okay, now I'm thinking some of these. Maybe this one I can disable. And then lower the volume of this one. Re-enable this, maybe lower it down. Maybe I can use this for when the pencil is spinning, but I have to tighten up those um, gaps even more. And then I can fade those in and out individually, but also select all of them, new compound clip, and we'll do pencil spin. So now we can lower the volume of all of them at once and also give it a fade in and fade out as a whole. This boing, I can disable that. What about this one? Yeah, maybe this one too. Because there's already so many of these high pitched sounds that it kind of becomes a mess. So it's not just a matter of putting things in, it's also a matter of knowing what to leave and then what to take back out. So it doesn't just become sound garbage. So I guess that's another good point is to look at what kind of elements you wanna draw attention to most at a specific part of your animation. So in this case, when the owl comes in, I kind of want the owl to be the most noticeable sound at that point. I'm guessing this was the one. Okay, so I'll turn on the volume, maybe push it back up. And now I can search for a backpack, perhaps. Oh, there's a zipper. Maybe I can bring the zipper in. Maybe have it so that it looks as if we're opening the bag up and out pops the owl. So maybe have it a bit sooner over here. It kind of mixes with all the other sounds. We can use this backpack hit sound for when the circle comes in. So let's say bring it back down and we'll delete these boing sounds. Oh, here's another interesting clicky sound. And also don't forget we can maximize the viewport. Okay, starting to feel rich, starting to feel full. And now to bring all of these back up together, we can select all the sounds, right click, new compound clip, hit create, and then we'll go inside of the timeline, alt click and drag a random clip here, then we'll disable it. And that way, when we go back to the main timeline, we can drag this clip over a lot longer. We can search for reverb, make sure you're searching for audio effects and then click and drag that there. And then let's say choose cathedral, but then we'll scale down the room size a little bit and also lower the output on the dry wet option, maybe increase the reverb time a little bit and see how that sounds like. Maybe that's a bit too much. Maybe 10% is all we need. And then you can't really fade this out if you have a reverb effect. You can see if I do that and then play it. The echo cuts off. So what we need to do is make sure we fade it out earlier. Of course, you can also go over to the effects settings under reverb and just tone down the reverb time. I'm looking to keep this maximum six seconds, so that's why. And I want to also add an element that goes with the line animation because I feel like there's nothing supporting that. So maybe a swoosh. Okay, this one, but with a very low volume. And then another fast one right over here for the second part of the line animation and lower the volume. And we can also fade these in and out. All right, guys, so there we have it. So thanks for watching and being patient all the way through. Make sure to check out the process breakdown video if you'd like to see how this logo animation was made from scratch, as well as the Minecraft TNT explosion, visual effects, and sound design tutorials. And again, don't forget to use the coupon code BROKEN for three months of Soundly Pro for free. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.